Like the title. All right. Dr. Mudibo right there for you. He joins us next. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning, and thank you for having me. So you don't like the head of missions? <laughs> what? Oh, no, it's still no. your title. It's, it's a title, but you know sometimes this title makes us feel somehow. And as a young person, you just need to be calming down and doing the whole thing. <laughs> That's what you were talking about before you came on set. And actually. shedding titles. <laughs> you didn't want those titles. Yeah. But interestingly, you were there in Kenya for those elections. And so um, part of the highlights for here today is that the voting system is not that different from ours, yeah. is it? So yeah. tell us about that. I mean, what exactly played out in terms of the voting system? Or maybe you could go ahead and tell us what it is and how similar it is with ours. You know, first of all, is um, I would say congratulations to Kenyans. They have done their election in as much as some things are coming up. Mm -hmm. But I will just try to share what stood out for me, mm -hmm. right? Um, in as much as there are pretty a lot of young people in Kenya, we have the same story of young people not believing in um, the electoral system or coming out to vote. Because um, prior to the election, we were trying to, you know, do some questions, put some questions around to young people, are you going to vote? And a whole lot of young people keep saying, you know what, these guys know who is going to win the election, so I will not waste my time, right? So one of the things that I know Everything is similar because this is Africa. The only difference is we're in the West Africa and Kenya is in East Africa, right? Something stood out for me. There was diaspora voting in Kenya. Twelve countries participated, and we don't do that. On the ballot papers, we, you've got um, um, logos as well as pictures. We, we, don't don't do do that. we don't do that, right? And something similar that we always see is the, the officials of, let's say, INEC here, we have what is called REC. They go there to sleep overnight to get all their materials ready, and then they move to um, the election, uh, the election um, polling stations and what have you. In Kenya, you go to, as an official, you go to the, the polling station and sleep there. Then ahead of time, they bring. And then one good thing about their own system is the system open at 6. At 5.15, we were in um, Embakasa West, Embakasa Girls Polling Station, at 5.15, there were people queuing, right? And officials were there. Everything is there. Voting is starting at 6, and it started at 6, right? That stood for me. And one of the things they did, or I, I would say we've been doing that, is in every polling station, they divide the polling station to voting point. And at least, at most, you get 700 um, um, voters in a particular polling um, a voting station. So you can come to a polling station and need maybe 20 to 25 voting stations in that polling unit, dividing the numbers so that there will not be um, a lot of um, chaos in um, maybe queuing and what have you. And another thing they did that I like is coming from the citizen as well as the election body. Now, as a woman that is pregnant and as an age person, whether man or woman, if you come, you don't have to follow the line. You just go straight and, and cast your vote. So one of the things they... So wait, you, they, they get accredited and then vote? Yes, straight. You get accredited and you vote. And one of the things from the citizen is I've seen two or three citizens. One is Ibrahim and the other one is Nyangaja. I cannot really pronounce his name very well. The other one has a bus that is transporting people to come and vote. And the other guy was sharing food. Should in case you get hungry... You know, come get this food. But in some situation why, where I think they did not do well is around people living with disabilities. You know, in the Embakasa that I've been to the first place, um, there, there was a voting station that is on a story building, on a second floor. You know, so anybody living with disability, I don't think um, that person will access that. But we try to put out, you know, sometimes you get this kind of issues. And... There is a massive low voter turnout, mm. right? In so, spite of the results that we're seeing. Yes, yes. Because if you go to, let's say, you know, Kenya have got a whole lot of slums, the, uh, the um, Kibera and other slums. If you go to the slum part of Kenya, you see massive numbers, you know, waiting to vote. But if you come into the town, the, the, the GRA, there's a Catholic school we went through, 
you know, some polling units have, you know, the numbers are not really encouraging, right? But, and then there was an issue. People keep saying, while they're queuing to vote, people keep saying, you know, we're just waiting for the result to be announced. And if this one is being announced the winner, there will be an issue in this side. And if this one is being announced the winner, there will be an issue in this side. But I did really focus on result. I don't have a problem with any result. Whatever they choose to vote, it's their own country. What I am concerned about is the fact that they've got beavers of what we're having, but they call it Kim Kids there, right? How does it work? And that's what I keep looking forward um, to when I went to all yeah. the... So what did you see particularly? With now, in most of um, um, the, 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 the thing they did best was the guys were really trained, the officials, the ad hoc staffs that were employed to do that job were really trained well, right? And they've got um, a mission where they can escalate any issue immediately and that issue will be taken care of. What kind of issues played up? Like now, so? some, some places, if you go to some um, slums, maybe the network is not that good, you know, so the machine will sort of have issues. I, 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 um, I've seen a situation whereby two machines had issues, so they had to, so in that polling um, station, they brought a manual accreditation papers. So what they did, they started accreditating people pending when the technical guys brought um, the, beavers um, the, the, the beavers back. So something like this, a lot of things happened. So um, I will say one thing that stood out for me is they have independent candidates, right? Going back to people, telling people, hey, democracy is all about question and answer. I'm telling you this. I'm asking you questions. Vote for me, right? And then coming back, hold me accountable. That played out. And um, I, I would say around 47 um, you know, independent candidates won election. So uh, a couple of things you highlighted that they do that we've not done yet. Yes. They have diaspora voting. Yes. We don't. Yes. They have independent candidates. We don't. Yes. So, uh, but The logos and pictures. Are also on the ballot. Yes. We don't. Yes. So, but concerning that accreditation and then voting, yeah. where the Kim Kit has a challenge, which is similar, we call it Beavers, they yes. call it Kim Kit. Yes. So if they accredit people manually, yeah. I'm not sure we, uh, I think we phased out accreditation manually because INEC says, well, if you come there, if your fingerprint or your picture is not recognized, they have to please step aside. Yes. yes. So when they do that manual accreditation, uh, even though you say they start by 6 a.m., yes. and then pending when the machine functions. Mm. So what did they do? They then take time out to upload it. So isn't that going to have some tailback? How do they manage that? Yes. So, so, so one of the things in, um, you know, where I went to, when that happens, right, the people were, were, I think there were six to seven people that were manually accredited before the technical guys arrived, right? So they had the um, and papers. What they will do, they have what is called Form 34A, right? And that form is the form that is being used to put the result, and then after that, you snap it on the beavers and then transmit it, right? So that is what they, you know, use on that particular thing. That accreditation, they snap mm -hmm. the, the accredited um, um, people on the part and then snap uh, the beavers and then um, transmit it. So in situations like that, mm -hmm. that is what happened. I know of um, places where um, election did not start till around 10 because of the issues of the Kim card. The, the machine wasn't working and then uh, the person in charge had issues with using the, the manual accreditation. So he had to stay for um, that um, uh, people to, uh, the technical guys to come sort it out and then um, election went on. Mm. So you've noted the differences, the major differences, but uh, Kenya is coming from a history of yes. electoral violence. violence yeah. uh, Post-electoral violence has marred the election. I think in 2007, mm. yeah. they'd, in, that was when they first of all introduced this electronic voting, which yeah. we are just transiting to now, and it's taken yeah. us quite a process. Yeah. Uh, so it's only fair that you watch or you know, place attention on the process that they, they, you know, that they have deployed this time around. And obviously, they have been able to make some progress. Yeah. Now, when you look at their process or their system, because this election too, 
was closely fought when you look at the difference between yes, the, the two numbers, leading yeah, candidates, 7.1 million and mm. 6.9 million. Yes, uh, exactly. Those are really, really close, close numbers. numbers. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, and every, every vote would have mattered. And we understand that even the electoral commissioners, some of them have refused to sign yes. just as we speak. So yes. there's still some controversy which could emerge from what we're seeing. Yes. Uh, but from what you are saying in Nigeria, when you look at the, pro the progress that we have made, yeah. Um, and, and where we currently are at. Do you think it's really possible for us to adopt as many, as many changes as Kenya has um, as we speak? For instance, the diaspora vote, or let me not, let me not go that far because that's too controversial. <laughs> let yeah. me talk about the, 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 the political, the logos of political parties, for mm -hmm. instance, mm -hmm. uh, putting it side by side with the Pictures. picture. Yeah. Is, is it really a possible thing here in Nigeria from what you know? All right, so first of all, I will have to give it to INEC. There has been a process. You know, INEC has been changing massively, right? Um, I know while growing up, I know a time where election will be holding where my mom and dad cast their votes back in Adama State, and then watching television, you hear people announcing result, mm. right? But you could see there are changes. So I believe in process as a young person, mm -hmm. right? I believe in bringing thoughts together, bringing learnings and actions. So I will say they are really going somewhere, right? And maybe the, the, the speed at which they're going, mm -hmm. it's not really what we're looking forward to in the 21st century, but they are really going somewhere. On the issue of putting um, a picture and um, um, logo, logo. I, I think it's a good thing for us to adopt because, I mean, it's not all of us that have gone to school. The four walls of classroom, it's, it's another thing in, in other parts of the country. So if that will really be um, in place, I think it will be a good thing. So the only thing I will do as a citizen now is to advocate and call for um, um, INEC to see that because we travel with the INEC um, um, chairman and some, some of his members in the team. You know, we were on the same plane, and I, I was happy that they, they, they witnessed that. Maybe they might have seen something I've not seen because they've got that access of being with the, the main people mm -hmm. in, in, in the election. So I will say, just do what you've seen. Um, but you know, to some extent, logistics has always been a problem. Exactly. And I've seen I, that I, I was just about to hit that because you, you said that the, in, in Kenya, the electoral officers slept at the polling units. Yes. How, how possible is that in our own context, especially now that we're still dealing with security issues? Yeah, but, but the thing is, um, maybe there's something I've not said. Mm -hmm. Logistics that we see here, yeah. logistics has also played a major role in Kenya. In part of Mombasa, you know, elections were cancelled, you know, some hours to the election because there was um, issues of, I think, miss of pictures on the ballot papers and, and, and what have you. So I think it's, it's like a problem that or a predicament that all the election bodies need to really look into logistics. Coming back to security, security is everything. I think security is election, and that's why we're doing all these things. So I don't know, maybe... Um, uh, the security apparatus can really um, move by. I don't subscribe to sleeping in the polling, polling station. In, okay. Because, I mean, largely, most of the polling stations I've been to in Kenya are largely primary schools and police stations, right? So how can you sleep in a police station? Or how can you sleep in a primary school on the bench or something? Well, I don't subscribe to that. I subscribe to hours of sleeping in the rec where at least um, a mattress will be provided and other amenities. I subscribe to that. Sleeping in a police station, I mean, I would think that I've committed a crime <laughs> if, if I were doing that. They've got questions away from Lagos, by yeah. the way, guys. Interesting, Mr. Modibot, especially to know uh, Kenya's advancement, considering that uh, they started, you know, this transition to, uh, you know, this um, um, digital form of voting some years back. I'd like you to also speak to the transmission of results. The um, elections were con conducted about five days ago, and news was that it was going to take time for the final results to be declared. How smooth was that transition, uh, that transmission now? Uh, what, what form of uh, transmission was deployed? Was it manual? Was it electronic? What are the lessons to also be learned from that process? All right, so if you look at um, what really happened in Kenya, 
it took time, you know, almost um, six days for the results to be um, announced, right? And I know their, 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 their laws give the, the commission that point of seven days um, to announce. And um, there have always been an issue of where transmission was done electronically, right? The Form 34A um, um, has been transmitted from the, the polling stations. But what happened, we keep seeing press releases that, you know, the commission has been complaining about all the candidates, the agents of the candidate in the coalition center wanting to go through or do an audit of the entire numbers that comes electronically. And that's why the, the whole thing took time. So I would say if we can really adopt that, I've seen that happen in Oshun and Ikiti. So if we can adopt, you know, the transmission of uh, the result electronically, and we will see other form of tabulation where other people can, maybe nobody will give result apart from INEC, but you know, you can see, um, imagine, you can see how the whole thing are coming in and then you will watch the process and look at how the process is being done. So I would say electronic um, transmission is the best for us, but all the countries, including Nigeria. Okay, uh, just before you go, I mean, there was one sheet I saw. I don't know how authentic it is, though, uh, even though it had the logos, the signs of IEBC, where one of the candidates was complaining, or the voters or agents, saying they saw the total number of accredited voters was, I think, about 320. Mm -hmm. And then they said total number of votes cast was 391. And so they thought that that, that couldn't be, that could be, there could be some hanky-panky right there. So the, those kind of, were those kind of things, were they issues? What, did they happen? What did you think of those kind of matters, if I thought you heard it. All right. So, so I've seen that, but you know, one of the things we do after deploying our ujacuzzi, we call it ujacuzzi, was trying to really fact check every information that come our own side, right? Um, I will tell you, I've witnessed votes buying, right? But Where? The, in, 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 in Kenya. In Kenya. Right? But oh. it's not that much. The vote buy-in, what really happened, um, someone was giving around 1,000 Kenyan shillings, that's about $8, mm -hmm. right? But some people, maybe the learned people around Kibera, were shouting to the agent, you know, there was a lot of chaos that, oh, you know, we don't need your money. We know who to vote and, and stuff like that. So most of the informations that go out there, there are people that were recruited, you know, a part of our uh, pre-election um, um, fact-checking process, because one of the things we did is we collected all the Twitter handles, right, of all the people contesting for election. And what do we intend to do with that is just to study how they put up their campaign messages and, you know, how they talk about peace and what have you. And during election, what we're doing was to get opinions from Twitter, come through our our Ujakuzi um, application just to for us to fact check and put out the information out there. So some, some of this information were really not fact checked, right? Uh, but some of them really happens. You know, election malpractices, a lot of them happens, but it's, it's, I, I will not say it has consumed the positive events that, right. that happened in the election. All right. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mokta Modibo, for your perspective and time today. Thank you. We're back in a moment. We've got one more lap to go here, so don't go away.